finally see people again. <laughs> Thank you for risking everything to be here. Thank me for risking everything to be here. You know what they say, you can't have a virus without a host. <laughs> hey, was that me? But wait, if I'm down there, how am I up here? That would mean that no one is in the audience. That would mean that I'm up here all alone. Just like prom night. Taking <laughs> the 72nd edition was a socially distanced affair. None of the small screen stars were actually inside the Staples Center in Los Angeles. The pandemies, as the host Jimmy Kimmel referred to them, they were done with over 100 live feeds into the homes of the nominees. Let's speak to writer and broadcaster Beth Webb, who joins us from London. I really like the fact that they said to people in the UK who were nominated, you might want to wear a pair of designer pajamas because we are going to be coming to you in a very unusual setting. Beth, what did you think? Schitt's Creek with nine, Watchmen actually won 11. But the thing about Schitt's Creek is that it won in every single category it was nominated. Can you express a preference for one or the other or are they both fantastic? I think it's safe to say they both stand on their own feet as two very separate shows, but it was it was a phenomenal year, I would say, for the Emmys. It was a year of significant firsts. Uh, Schitt's Creek was the first comedy, as you say, nine wins there. It was the first comedy to win all of the major comedy awards for one series, so it scooped all of the performance awards, which includes Father and Son there also. Um, a phenomenal year for diversity. This was uh, the first year, well, this year saw the most uh, black nominees and winners as well. So that was massive. And uh, as we say, Zendaya's win was historic in that she was the youngest uh, winner for her category, the second black woman to have ever won. And... Um, she also plays a, an LGBTQIA character. So that was, a, that was a historical night. It really, really was significant. I think the Emmys fully pull, pulled it out of the bag with this. Sure, absolutely. Look, I've seen the first series of Schitt's Creek, about to start the second one. They've done four in total. It's a pretty standard comedy, albeit the writing is great and the acting is wonderful. Watchmen is the thing that really intrigues me. First of all, I haven't seen it. Based on a graphic novel, which was hugely popular, and then turned into a Hollywood film which didn't do well, but covering issues that are very pertinent to the way we're living today. Racism, uh, the issue of wearing masks. Tell us more about Watchmen. Of course. So this was another first. This was the first uh, comic book adaptation to win in this category. It is a dark and gritty adaptation that stands very differently from the film in that it has come at, as you say, a very pivotal time for race relations in America, starring Regina King. If you get a chance to see her acceptance speech, you'll see she's wearing a Brianna Taylor uh, T-shirt there as well. So she is she is very a very prominent voice um, for protest and race relations as well. It's just it's arrived at a, a phenomenal time. It's a very unique reading of the book. It's gritty. It's got very dark comedy in it. It's um, it's sensational. I definitely think that is the main evening of, of that evening. If you haven't seen Watchmen, um, watch one. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to. Definitely, that's an appointment for me. No more Game of Thrones this year, which was sweeping the board for year uh, year after year. No more Veep. Um, which was also sweeping the board in the comedy section. So opening up the way for other programmes, Succession is another one I haven't seen. Seven Emmys for Succession, which is a drama. What more can you tell us about that one? Of course. Now, the interesting um, tie that we have to this is Brits is that Succession is written by Jesse Armstrong, who um, cut his teeth on British shows like Pete Show and Fresh Meat. Uh, and it is a, an elitist uh, series inspired in part by the Murdochs, who are a very wealthy family, and their inner politics. Um, and it's very cruel. It's a very cruel, biting show that saw um, Jeremy Strong, as you're seeing on screen there, he walked away with um, um, one of the big acting prizes and beat off uh, Brian Cox, who everyone believed was going to be the winner for the evening. Um, it's yeah, it's a it's a very important message about elitism in America. Political this year's wins, I think. Beth, how is uh, 
the small screen changing because of the coronavirus pandemic in terms of how much has it set back uh, filming that was supposed to already have taken place in terms of what's going to happen in the future of how they can make TV programs while having to maintain all of these precautions that are supposed to keep us safe. What are the biggest impacts that are happening for the small screen? Well, a lot of productions have been paused. Succession, as we were just talking about, the third season for that. We don't know when that's going to resume filming. I know that with um, certainly in the UK speaks of a second lockdown, that's um, causing big concerns as to when productions will resume. Watchmen were pretty safe because there was only one uh, series there. But um, I think we're going to see... Whereas a lot of shows have been resourceful in how they're coming back around and how they're starting to film again, I know that film uh, shows like Riverdale have started using mannequins in their um, filming as a way of getting around certainly intimate scenes. Uh, it might be that we're facing further lockdown precautions, which could really stunt TV production for the next few years. Yeah, let's see. Beth Webb, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. Beth Webb running us through uh, the big winners on what was the 72nd night for the American Emmy TV Awards. And uh, just to run through some of the others that will, will be coming your way soon, because depending on which territory you're in. Beth, listen, we'll let you go. Uh, just to tell the viewers that uh, 11 for Watchmen, 9 for Schitt's Creek, 7 for Succession, and then The Mandalorian, RuPaul's Drag Race, and Saturday Night Live. If you watch streaming services, you'll know that geo-blocking exists, so you have to wait for these programs to come to your territory. But when they do, you've heard some of the expert opinion on what you should be looking out for.